Welcome to today's video. I have here with me a normal home security camera and this one is cool because you can actually pan the camera and also tilt so you can actually look in a 360 degrees view of your apartment. And last week we had this RC car that we built, we put a webcam on it and the problem is that it was fixed so we can only look straight ahead. If you want to look to the right, we actually needed to drive the car to the right. So it's very easy to make a gimbal like this with servo motors. So in this video, I'm going to be showing you how you can do that using normal 3D printed parts and servo motors. So let's start building. All right, before we start, I just want to show you this new component here that I'm using, and that's called a LiPo voltage alarm. That is very useful because it lets you know when it's time to recharge your LiPo batteries. LiPo batteries are not supposed to be discharged past a certain threshold level. You can actually damage them. And this guy is gonna let you know when it's time to recharge them by playing a very loud noise. And it also has a nice display here so you can always see live what's the current voltage of your LiPo battery. But that's what it looks like when you connect it to the car. You always gotta connect the red wire to the rightmost pin of the alarm. And I must say it looks a bit sketchy with this display, but in the next video we can maybe print some parts to cover all these wires and make it look a bit nicer. But essentially it's gonna be looping over all the cells in your battery and tell you the voltage level of each cell. To move our gimbal we're gonna be using servo motors and these are probably the cheapest ones you can find online. These are called the 9 gram servo motors. They're blue like this. And they're gonna have the three usual wires, one for ground, one for VCC, one for the signal and they have a 180 degrees range of motion, so for the gimbal project it's gonna be more than enough. For very standard parts like this servo motor, I like to simply go to Thingiverse and try to see if I can find a model that somebody else already did. And in this case, of course, I found a model from this guy F. Bueno Net, so I give credit for him for this model. And it's much easier to just download something ready than try to design something for yourself. So if somebody has done it, why not just use what's already there? One downside of getting files from Thingiverse sometimes is that they come in this mesh format which is difficult to edit but we just need some holes for the camera so it wasn't that difficult. A couple of weeks ago that's what the car looked like, we had the webcam in the front like this and then we decided to put the Raspberry Pi camera and the selfie stick but for this gimbal we're just gonna move everything forward to the front of the car and try to print everything again. That's what the final assembly looked like and it looked pretty good. I just had to use the screws that already came with the servo motors and also some smaller screws to connect the camera. We're going to be connecting the Raspberry Pi camera as usual to this ribbon connector. If you want to see a tutorial for that, I'll leave a link in the description. There is already a servo driver board on the car, that is the PCA9685, and it has 12 channels, so we simply need to connect two more servo motors to that. After putting everything together, that's what it looks like, and I must say it looks much better than with the webcam. Here's when we found the first problem with our car, and that's what's called a servo jitter problem. In this case, you can see the servo motor shook a lot, and it wouldn't stay stable. That is caused because of the PID controller of the servo motor that tries to reach a goal, but because there's so much inertia, there's so much mass that is trying to move that it overshoots and it can never quite reach the goal. So it starts shaking like that. So it took quite a lot of time from my side to actually solve this servo motor jittering problem, but I actually decided to resort to a very complicated engineering tactics, which is using a normal rubber band. So by wrapping this thing around the servo motor and the base, I actually got more friction between the two components and it wouldn't overshoot anymore. So the PID controller of the servo motor would go crazy and you know sometimes more friction is better and you can do that just with normal household things like a rubber band. But just from a quick test now I can already see that the camera is much more stable. We have these rubber bands now and we can actually use it for filming. Alright so the next step was for us to map the inputs from the Xbox controller to our gimbal that we just created to these new servo motors. And for that I'm going to go quickly over the code that I've written. All of this is available on GitHub, so you can also look that if you want to spend more time on it. But I'm just going to quickly go through it and show a few principles of object-oriented programming and how we can use that to make things easier for us. So before we already had servo motors that was for steering the car and we had already a class that we created for uh, managing all of those servo motors by abstracting this board that we're using called the PCA9685. So here on the right, I have the code that I've written for this servo driver board. As I said, it's the PCA9685. And here we're going to have two enum, enum classes. Those are meant just to map certain names to some numbers to make it more easy to understand. So you don't have to just look at numbers, these magic numbers. You can actually understand what they mean in a better way. So this one axis that's going to be for the Xbox controller each joystick of the Xbox controller is going to be represented by a certain axis and those can be seen here by a number. The same thing here for the channel, but the channel is going to actually be 
relating to the outputs of the servo driver board. So we have 12 different channels there. So it means we can control up to 12 different PWM devices. And these are just the numbers of the different outputs of that board. In our case, we just put a new gimbal, which are gonna be using this uh, pitch and yaw channels because we connected those servo motors to channel four and channel five respectively. We also have here our servo driver class. So that's gonna abstract all of the interactions that we wanna do to this servo driver board. We're gonna have some initialization uh, commands here that's from the library that we are importing from Adafruit. And two methods, one's gonna, to, one's gonna map the joystick inputs from the Xbox controller to a value that the PCA9685 understands. So from the joystick, we get a value from negative one to one and we need to map it to a value that ranges from zero all the way to this number here, which is uh, in hexadecimal F, 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 F. And finally, we have the, the main part of this function, which is to actually set the PWM value of a given channel. We're simply gonna pass a channel number and also a value that we want, and we're gonna then call the library to actually set that value. We can now look on the left side. On the left side here, that's the new code that we've written. That's to control your cam gimbal that we just created with the servo motors. We have here some max and minimum values. We have two degrees of freedom here, one to yaw. Yaw is looking to the right or left and the pitch, which is looking up and down. So I had to calibrate these numbers manually. I just saw where were the limits, either to the left, right, uh, down and up, so it wouldn't uh, hit the structure and I just hard-coded those values here. We initialize the, the class by simply creating a new object from the servo driver. So we're simply reusing code that's already been written and using it in this function here. So whenever we call this servo driver object here, we're referencing the class that we uh, talked about before. And we're only gonna have one function here that's move. So whenever uh, an event comes uh, through WebSockets uh, from our Xbox controller, we're gonna see what kind of axis are we talking about. So if, for example, if it's a right joystick event on the horizontal uh, axis, we're gonna then tell our servo driver to move the yaw channel. So we're gonna actually be looking right or left. And if we're moving the right joysticks up and down, we're gonna then tell our servo driver to set the PWM of the pitch channel. And that's pretty much all it does. So it, it keeps receiving event values from WebSockets and mapping the right function here in our servo driver class. All right, so I'll leave you now with the final result of everything we've done here. You can see now that the gimbal can look to the right, to the left, up and down, and it's much easier to just look around without having to steer the car in the direction that you wanna look at. You can see here I can look at the yellow duck as well as the red duck, and that just made things much, much easier. But that's pretty much what I had for today. If you liked the video, you can subscribe to the channel because every week we try to create projects like this and also create new tutorials for you to learn robotics and programming skills. So I see you next time and thank you for watching.